Hey everybody, these days a lot of us are filming things remotely and then they're being put together somewhere else. So in the next few minutes, I'd like to go over a few techniques for how to film and shoot yourself at your home in the best way possible and then send that off to make an amazing video. Um, we all have these kind of amazing cameras at our disposal. First of all, here's like an iPhone. This is an kind of amazing iPhone and shoots really well. But the one this is being shot on is not an amazing iPhone, it's an iPhone 6. We're gonna show you how to make even that couple years old phone look pretty good. The first thing you wanna do is not shoot vertically like this. Uh, videos we make these days are gonna, if they're going on YouTube or Vimeo or one of those formats, we don't want vertical aspect ratio. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure to shoot widescreen. And voila, we are widescreen. See how it fills the whole of the frame? Step number one, don't forget it. Thing to remember number two is lighting. You might think, oh, I'm gonna stand next to this beautiful window, it's gonna look so nice. No, it's not. The light outside is so bright and we're so dark in comparison that it's gonna be blown out and look like this. You can't even see my face. So all we've done here is just turn the shot around. I am looking at that light, that beautiful white light from the window is shining in on my face, filling it out quite nicely with nice, even light. So be looking at the window, don't have it behind you. The next thing to think about is audio. The microphone on these cameras actually isn't that bad, but you have to be close to it. Your audio is only as good as how close you are to the camera. So I sound like kind of quiet and echoey back here. We don't want that. But my audio like this sounds much better, doesn't it? Because the mic's only a foot or two away from my face. So point number three, don't be afraid to get nice and close, both for the shot, isn't that pretty, and the audio quality. The next thing I wanna think about is background. Yes, this is like a boring, plain wall, but it's kind of flat. You don't know where I am, I could be anywhere. Uh, but we want to think about depth in a background. But check this out, the background has some depth to it and we have a sense of place. Yes, this is like a super cool setup background and you probably don't have anything like that wherever you're shooting from, but think about depth in the background and try out a few different places so it doesn't look as flat. Last thing is the quality of your video is only as good as it is after you send it to whoever is making the video. Um, you might be tempted to like, hey, I'm just gonna email this from my phone. No, it doesn't look good if you email it because your phone's gonna compress it and make it all grainy. It's gonna look something like this. Even worse is to send a text. I'm just gonna text someone this video. No, no, it's gonna look so bad, at least on the iPhone, it compresses it like crazy. It's gonna look like this. Don't text the video. It's going to be slightly more annoying, but you want to transfer the actual video file from your phone to your computer. You can use a program like Image Capture on the Macs to actually import the actual video and then post it to somewhere that houses files like Dropbox or a Google Drive link. Alternatively, uh, Dropbox and Google Drive have apps for your phone. So it's annoying, I know, but it makes the final project so much better. Download one of those. There might be instructions below here in the comments on exactly which one and where to post that. Um, but download Dropbox or Google Drive and post it as per the instructions because then you're getting the whole clean file there. So thank you so much for tuning in and listening. Happy filming. Good luck.